Hello everyone. Welcome to Basics e-learning. In lesson number 15 video, I have explained problems on properties of systems. I have chosen few problems from previous question papers and for the theory part of properties of systems, you can check my previous videos. Here I am leaving a link in the description box on all the lessons that I have explained till now on signals and systems. The first problem that I am going to discuss here is for the following system determine whether the system is linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal, stable. So the given problem here is h of x of n is equal to x of n minus nd. So let us check each and every case. So coming to the first one property is linearity. So the property of linearity says a of x1 of n plus b x2 of n if you apply this to your system h then the output should be h of x of n as you have a here this will be a into h of x1 of n plus b into h of x2 of n right so this is the property. Let us see whether the given system is linear or not. So, we have to write the given input x of n as weighted sum of two signals that is x1 of n and x2 of n. So, let us take here for us x of n is given as x of n minus nd. Then what will be x1 of n input can be written as x1 of n minus nd x2 of n can be written as x2 of n minus n. So, if you are writing it as the summation, weighted summation of two inputs, so this will be a x1 of n plus b x2 of n. Means what here? x1 and x2 are x1 of n minus nd and x2 of n minus nd. So, this is nothing but h of a x1 of n minus nd plus b x2 of n minus nd. So, this is nothing but a into h of x1 of n minus nd plus b into h of x2 of n minus nd. So, this is nothing but what? a h of, so this is nothing but your x1 of n, right? So x1 of n plus b h of or n2 of n, right? So the property is proved. So I can say the given system is linear. Let us check for the second property, time invariance property. So time invariant property says an equal shift in the input should reflect an equal shift in the output. Suppose say if y of n is the output of your x of n for input x of n then a shift in your input that is x of n minus n naught should reflect in y of n minus n naught. Let us see whether it is satisfying or not. So now here we are given with h of x of n is equal to x of n minus nd they are given, right? So, let us check it out now. h of x of n minus n naught, right? I need it. h of x minus x of n minus n naught I need, right? So, that is nothing but x of in place of n, I have to write n minus n naught. Extra I have minus nd, right? Now, let us see. If h of x of n is nothing but y of n, then what is h of x of n minus n naught? That is nothing but y of n minus n naught. Right. So, this is equal to y of n minus n naught. So, that is equal to here x of n minus n d minus n naught. So, if you see x of n, you are taking it as y of n. 
then x of n minus n d minus n naught is nothing but your h of x of n minus n naught, right? Because here it is given as x of n minus n d is nothing but h of x of n. Then what happened to with, with this minus n naught? So I am writing here minus n naught. Understood from this question itself I am writing. So obviously this is satisfied, right? So the system is time invariant here. Next is check whether the system is having memory or not. Right. So, if it depends upon the previous values, then we say it has some memory. That is, if the present output depends upon the previous values. See here, h of x, h of x of n is nothing but y of n. So, this is depending upon the x of n minus n d means it is depending upon the previous value. So, it has memory. So, they are asking you to check memory less. So, it is not memory less means it is memory system, right? It has some memory. And one more thing I will explain. Suppose say if nd is equal to 0, then what happens? h of x of n is equal to x of n means for present value of output, it is depending upon the present value of input. Then we say it does not have any memory and the system is memory less system you can write. Next is causal. So, to check whether the system is causal or not, right? So, if you see here, if this nd is greater than or equal to 0, then only the system is causal. Means, it has to depend only on the present value of the this one or also the present and also the past values of the input. Then we say it is causal, right? So, now I can say this is causal system. This is not causal system, right? Because it is depending upon the previous value. If nd is greater than or equal to 0, then we say it is a causal system. Otherwise, it is a non-causal system. Then is stability. Stability means for a bounded input, there should be a bounded output. See here, suppose if your input value is less than infinity, then your output value is also less than infinity only. This is just a time shift here, right? So, then we can say the given system is stable. So, the system is linear, time invariant, it is not a memoryless system and it has, it has, it is a causal system and also stable system. Coming to the second problem. For the following system, determine whether the system is linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal and stable. So, the given problem is T of x of n is equal to y of n. That is nothing but g of n, x of n. So, here T is the system operator, x of n is the input, y of n is the output. So, the output is nothing but the input multiplied by some other signal g of n. This kind they have given. So, now... We have to check whether the all the properties of the system are satisfied or not. So, let us see first the linearity property. So, you know T of x of n is nothing but y of n. Correct? So, as you need to split the input into two, sum of two weighted inputs, write down stepwise. T of x of n will be what? x1 of n will be y1 of n. That is nothing but here g of n x1 of n right so what is t of a x to a x1 of n right from here only in place of g of n you write g of n in place of x1 of n x of n first i have this is nothing but g of n x of n no in place of g of n as i am writing x1 of n i have replaced now i am writing a into x1 of n so this will be a x1 of n so, similarly, you can write b x2 of n. t of b x2 of n will be g of n into b x2 of n, right? Suppose, say, if you are writing in place of this x of n, once I wrote x1 of n, next I wrote a into x1 of n, next I took b into x2 of n. Now, I am writing a x1 of n plus b x2 of n. 
let us see so in place of x of n i have this much big term so write it down in the output so g of n is common in place of x of n you have to write your input what is your input now a x1 of n plus b x2 of n multiply so that is nothing but here a into g of n x1 of n plus b into g of n x2 of n now what is this a into g of n x of n x1 of n t a of x1 of n plus t b x2 of n right so this is nothing but your linearity property right so if you write a outside this is nothing but your linearity property so you can write the given system is linear let us check the time invariance property so time invariance property says for an equal shift in the input there should be an equal shift in the output right so you are given with t of x of n is nothing but g of n into x of n so that is nothing but your y of n you write y of n also so y of n is nothing but again g of n x of n what is the property time invariance property the shift that is x of n minus n not should result in the equal shift that is y of n minus n not so let us do these two and check whether these two are equal or not so x of n that i am writing x of n minus n not so this is nothing but in place of g of n g of n only right x of n in place of x of n i have x minus n not that you write here x of n minus n not now coming here in place of n i have n minus n not so this will be g of n minus n not multiplied by x of n minus n not so here y of n minus n not is not equal to t of x of n minus n not so the system is not time invariant system now coming to the third one memoryless so check it out you are given with y of n is equal to g of n into x of n so for the present value of output it is depending upon the present value of input only right then it the system doesn't have any memory then we say the system is memoryless so at this point of time if you have any doubt take some value suppose say n is equal to 2 then y of 2 is equal to g of 2 into x of 2 right so that is it is depending upon the time 2 only right so then we say it doesn't have any memory next is causality if the output depends on the if the present value of output depends only on the past or present value of the input we say it's a causal system so directly from the given problem statement i can say it is depending only on the present value so the system is causal here next is memory stable right so to check whether the given system is stable or not so consider your x of n is bounded to some value bx this bx is should be it should be less than infinity right now what will be your y of n check it out whether it is also less than infinity or not so magnitude of y of n is nothing but g of n x of n right so that you can write it as g of n multiplied by x of n so this x of n is it has that limit that is b of x right so just that in that some value that is less than infinity is multiplied by g of n which is also again bounded right so that's why i can say the system is bibo stable next problem is for the following system determine whether the system is linear time invariant memoryless causal and stable given problem is y of t is dx of t by dt so first let us check for the linearity so y of t is nothing but t of x of t where t is the operator now what will be t of x1 of t it will be y1 of t 
so similarly t of x2 of t y2 of t right so that is nothing but what is y of t we have dx of t by dt so this will be d by dt of x1 of t right that is you are taking the differentiation of the input that is nothing but your output so if input is x of t your output is differentiation of x of t if input is x1 of t differentiation of x1 of t is your output similarly if you are considering x2 of t as your input then differentiation of x2 of t is your output so to check for the linearity your input should be a weighted sum of multiple inputs so i am considering now instead of x1 x2 i am taking a x1 of t plus b x2 of t now it will be what d by dt of whatever it may be the input that full thing will come that is a x1 of t plus b x2 of t so now you can split this that is nothing but d by dt of a x1 of t plus d by dt of b x2 of t so this can be written a you can write it out because a is constant a d by dt of x1 of t is nothing but here t of x1 of t plus b is constant write it out t of x2 of t right satisfying the linearity property that is t of a x1 of t plus b x2 of t should be equal to a into t x1 of t plus b into t x2 of t so the given system is satisfying linearity property so i can say the given system is linear here next is time invariance property so the shift in in the input signal should reflect in a similar shift in your output signal so that is your time invariance property so given signal is x of t and output is your y of t suppose if the shift in input signal be x of t minus t not then output signal should also uh, output signal should be having a shift of similar t not so let us consider so here uh, t of x of t is nothing but your y of t which is equal to dx of t by dt now split it into two parts one is t of x of t is equal to y of t so i am writing t of x of t minus t not will be what y of t minus t not right so that is nothing but d by dt of in place of x of t i have x of t minus t not write it down x of t minus t not so what is this one d by dt of x of t minus t not is nothing but t of x of t minus t not right because this is nothing but t of y of t is equal to t of x of t right y of t minus t not is nothing but t of x of t minus t not so both the sides the equation is satisfied here the property is satisfied so i can say the system is time invariant coming to the third property memory so whether the system is having memory or not so here differentiation is the uh system right the system is doing here differentiation of input so what is this differentiation states dx of t by dt is nothing but according to the definition it is limit delta t tends to 0 x of t plus del of t minus x of t divided by del of t so the system h t suppose say if it is taking input of x of t it has to process this much and give you the output as y of t so while processing the input it has to remember this value the differentiation value right that is the difference value the infinitesimal change that the system has to remember means it should have some memory so the system is having memory so as they are asking 
is the system is memoryless no it is it is not a memoryless system means it has a memory that you can write with the explanation here coming to causality property see here it is always depending upon only the input values right so the output does not depend on any of the future values so we can say the system is causal the last property is memory so suppose if you are taking x of t magnitude of x of t has limited to bx what about your y of t y of t is nothing but differentiation right so if you are taking differentiation of this input there is no rule that it has to be bounded by some other integer right it may be like infinity also you will get in differentiation so that's why we can say the system is unstable so this is how we can solve this problem one more problem is here to check further properties of the system given problem is y of t is equal to cos of x of t that means the system here t is performing the cosine operation on the given input signal that is if input is x of t output is cos x of t so suppose say if input is x1 of t then your output will be t of x1 of t which is nothing but cosine of x1 of t right suppose if your input is x2 of t just follow the step by step procedure then it will be t of x2 of t will be your output that is nothing but cosine of x2 of t then suppose say your input is a weighted sum of multiple inputs a x1 of t plus b x2 of t is my input then what about your output output is t of and in place of just x1 of t x2 of t i have now this much big term just write it a x1 of t plus b x2 of t right which is nothing but cosine of your input cosine of whatever is your input that you write so a x1 of t plus b x2 of t right this will be your output now check for the linearity so is this is equal to t x1 of t plus t x2 of t check it out what is t x1 of t cos x1 of t plus cos x2 of t then it will be what cos of a plus b suppose say this big one this part you call it as a this term you take it as b so this is of the form cos a plus cos b so but this cannot be equal to cos a plus cos b right cos of a plus b is not equal to cos a plus cos b so the given system is non linear system you can write it down coming to time invariance property so again check it out if input is x of t output is cos x of t that we are writing it as after process no so that can be written as t of x of t so a shift in your input signal should reflect a similar shift in your output signal so let us do suppose if your input is x of t minus t not that is your output will be t of x of t minus t not that is nothing but cosine of in place of x of t now i have x of t minus t not so replace x of t minus t not right so what is this one this is nothing but your t of x of t minus t not that is nothing but y of t minus t not correct no so because this is y of t this will be y of t minus t not so the condition is satisfied system is time invariant next third property is memoryless so if you see here the output depends only on the present value of input y of t is depending on cosine of x of t so t is depending upon only on t it is not depending on any of the past values so the system is not having any memory so we can say the system is memoryless coming to the next property that is causality so if you see here the output y of t it is not depending upon the any of the future value of here 
x of t. Suppose if t is equal to 1 means x of t also x of 1. y of 1 is depending upon x of 1 only, not x of 2 or x of 3, future value, right? So that's why I can say the system is causal. The last property is stability. So to check whether the given system is BIBO stable or not, first let us bound the input x of t to some value bx which is less than infinity. Then your output y of t, check whether it is also less than infinity or not. So output is nothing but cosine of your input. y of t is nothing but cos of x of t. Cosine of x of t. If you write down the cos values of x of t, it is always equal to maximum value if you are taking that is mod it is equal to 1 right so that is cos value varies from minus 1 to 1 as i am taking a magnitude it is always 1 right so which is less than infinity so i can say the system is bibo stable so like this we can solve the problem so the cosine of your input signal if you are considering as the problem then the system is non-linear time invariant memoryless causal and Step. Coming to the last problem in today's video, y of n is equal to log 10 x of n. So check whether this uh, system is following the properties of linearity, time invariant, memoryless, causal, stable or not. So first property here is linearity. So to check so, if input is x of n, the system t is taking the logarithm of your uh, input and giving your output. So, that is log x of n here, right? So, this is nothing but that is t of x of n is equal to log of x of n, right? So, now what will be your output when input is x1 of n? Again, follow the same procedure. So, in place of x of n, you write it as x of n, you write it as x1 of n. So, anyhow, this is base 10, write it down. So, x1 of n, right. In place of x1 of n, if I apply input as x2 of 2, x2 of n, what will be your output? Log 10 mod x2 of n, right. Now, increase. If your input is a combination of weighted inputs. So, ax1 of n plus bx2 of n. Then what happens? So, in place of x of n, if you have x1 of n, you are getting log x1 of n. In place of x of n, if you have input x2 of n, so you are getting log x2 of n. Now, in place of x of n, I am giving this much as my input. That is ax1 of n plus bx2 of n. So, that is nothing but log of Whatever it may be the input, you write it off. Ax1 of n plus Bx2 of n. Now, check out. So, is this equal to T of x1 of n plus T of x2 of n? That is what is our linearity theorem, right? So, T of Ax1 of n plus Bx2 of n should be equal to A into T of x1 of n plus B into T of x2 of n. But here, log of this much suppose say x, this much you suppose say y. Log of x plus y is not equal to log x plus log y, right? So, this is not equal to t of a into t of x1 of n plus b into t of x2 of n. So, we can say the system is non-linear. It is not satisfying the property of linearity here. Second property is time invariance. So, time invariance property says a shift in your input signal should reflect a similar shift in your output signal. That is, if T of X of N is equal to Y of N, then T of X of N minus N naught should be equal to Y of N minus N naught. So, check it out. So, here, T of X of N is nothing but your Y of N that is equal to log 10 X of N that is given. So, now go with T of 
x of n minus n naught. So in place of input, I have x of n minus n naught. So that will be log 10 x of n minus n naught. Now, check it out here. What is this one? This is nothing but y of n minus n naught. So obviously, it is satisfied. So the system is time invariant. Coming to memory. So, output depends only on the present value of your input. Output is depending only on the present value of input. So, we can say the system is having memory less. Causality. Output check whether the output is depending on the future values or not. So, here output is not depending on any future values. It is depending only on the present value. As it is not depending upon any future value, I can say the system is causal. So, the last one is memory, stable, right. The last one is stability. To check whether the system is BIBO stable or not. So, if input is bounded to some value mx that is less than infinity, if you are taking the logarithm of that input, Output is also bounded to some value. If input is less than infinity, logarithm of that value is also less than infinity only. So, I can say the system is BIBO step. For more videos, please do like, share, subscribe to our channel. Let us know your suggestions and queries in the comment box. Thank you.